about Alley Cats and new viewers. So today is part one of my November 2017 favorites. If you're new to the channel and haven't seen my favorites videos before, that's where I list everything I loved in the entertainment industry, mostly movies, TV shows, and video games. And I split these into two parts because I have way too many favorites for one person to have. But let's just get started and talk about the movies I've enjoyed. I've been participating in the 365 day film challenge where I watch a movie a day. So if you'd like to see the movies I don't mention and I'd like to see my ratings for those movies and a sneak peek of the ratings I give the movies I do mention in this video, follow me on Letterboxd or check out my blog where I write written review roundups. But my challenge is coming to a close very soon. I'm a little bit sad. But let's get on with the movies that I loved. The first one up is War for the Planet of the Apes. This is the last film in the new Planet of the Apes trilogy. And this is personally my favorite film out of the trilogy. It's just so hard hitting, so well done, and I just love the conclusion of Caesar's story. Of course these special effects are amazing as per usual with these films. I again loved Andy Serkis as Caesar. I really, really liked Woody Harrelson as the Colonel, and I just thought the messages it spread. The next film up is Thor Ragnarok. I actually did a video review for this film, so if you'd like to check that out, that'll be up here in the iCard, and I'll link it down below if I remember to. But I personally really adored this. This is my favorite Thor film out of the franchise so far, which is saying a lot because Thor is my favorite Avenger. The next movie up is The Survivalist. This is a film about a man who is living in a post-apocalyptic world. He's living by himself, but then one day a mother and her daughter arrive on his doorstep and his life goes tits up after that. Literally. This is a brutal film. It is graphic. There is just pretty much everything that will make this an NC-17 rating, which I'm not sure if it was rated that, but I could see it being rated that. But it lends credibility to the story. There's not a lot of dialogue in this film, but again, lends credibility. And it's just such a bleak, desolate film. All the actors did a great job portraying these characters and making them seem realistic and giving them nuance and showing different sides to these characters. And they explore some themes that are very realistic that you'd actually have to worry about in a post-apocalyptic situation. And I just think this is a really underrated film. And if you are mature enough, you're old enough to see it and you can appreciate it, check it out. The next movie up is Your Name. This is an anime and it's so beautiful. I went in knowing this was going to be good because I'd heard nothing but amazing positive things about this movie, but it blew my mind. And I knew the central concept, which is a teenage girl and boy end up swapping bodies and they just kind of had to get to know each other in their routines. But the movie is so much more than that, and I won't spoil it for you, but when I learned that it was more than just a body swapping film, that's when it really hit me. The soundtrack by Red Whips is amazing. I'm still listening to the songs to this day because they're so good. The animation is beautiful. I thought the English dub was good, and I highly recommend you watch this movie if you haven't seen it. Even if you're not usually a fan of anime, this is an amazing film with a really powerful message about love, and trust and family and all these amazing themes and it's just an incredible film. Now the next movie up is a divisive movie. I really enjoyed it though and that is Murder on the Orient Express. I freaking adored the book so I think that might have influenced my love for the movie but Murder on the Orient Express is definitely in the vein of classic detective mystery films. This is a very slow burning film you're getting to know these different characters. There's a myriad of characters. And I think that all the actors did a fantastic job, even with most of them having just a few lines, because again, there were so many characters. But I thought Daisy Ridley, Michelle Pfeiffer, Josh Gad, Leslie Ohm Jr., Willem Dafoe, all the rest of the cast were incredible. But I have to say Kenneth Branagh, who is the director and star of this film, is definitely the standout. His portrayal of Hercule Poirot is fantastic and it just fits perfectly with what I imagined while reading the book. And again, if you're looking for a classic mystery film, this is going to be up your alley, but it will bore some people. I know a few friends of mine were bored by this film, but I personally really loved it. And plus, it's just an outstandingly gorgeous film to look at. I just have to point that out. It's stunning. The next movie I want to mention is The Purple Rose of Cairo. This is a Woody Allen film and it stars Mia Farrow and Jeff Daniels. And let me just say, Jeff Daniels in this film, oh my dear lord. Ah, so handsome. 
But this is a very whimsical film. It's about this woman who is in an abusive marriage. It's set during the Depression, and she goes to the movie theater a lot to escape, and she watches this film called The Purple Rose of Cairo, and she falls in love with it. She sees it like five or six times, and on the final time she watches it, one of the side characters that she's enamored with, named Tom Baxter, actually literally jumps out of the screen and falls in love with her, and they have an adventure together. But of course this causes chaos because people are like, how the hell did he get out of the movie? And of course the actor who played him, who is also played by Jeff Daniels, wants to get the character back in the screen because this is going to hurt his career. And it sounds complicated, but when you watch it, it just makes so much sense. And it's just so lovely and, like I said, whimsical and fantastical. And it's just sweet. Ah, so good. Mia Farrow is just so good in this film. And I know the whole Woody Allen thing. If you can separate the art from the artist, The Purple Rose of Cairo is just a really beautiful film. And the last movie I want to mention for this part is Brigsby Bear. I knew the central concept of this film about a man who was kidnapped as a baby and he's found when he's 25 years old and has returned home and he's devastated when he learns that Brigsby Bear, his favorite TV show, was actually made by his captors. So he sets out to make a movie of his own to end the series and give it a satisfying conclusion. This film is so much more than that. It's really, really sweet. It's about following your dreams, about finding yourself, being your truest self, and finding out what it is that makes you happy. And I just thought this was really well done. This was, of course, produced by The Lonely Island, which anything with The Lonely Island stamp is just perfection in my book. But all the actors are so good. I especially loved Mark Hamill, even though his role was very small in this film. He was really good. I love seeing Mark Hamill in this film. But everyone, everyone was so, so good in this film. And I highly recommend you see it because it's just so much more than the synopsis makes it out to be. Now, moving on to TV, the first one I want to mention is Alias Grace. This is a Netflix exclusive series, and it's based off of Margaret Atwood's book of the same name. This is only six episodes long, I actually finished this in two days. And it stars Sarah Gadden as Grace Marks, who was an actual person. And this follows Grace as she recounts her story to an alienist, which is now called a psychologist. But Grace Marks has been accused and is in a penitentiary for committing two murders and she is telling her side of the story to the alienist and you see it unfold and it is a slow burning story but Sarah Gadden is so fantastic as Grace and the story is so intriguing and there are so many dark moments in this series that it's just so beautiful. All the episodes were directed by Mary Heron who directed American Psycho. It's just such a powerful miniseries and it's really interesting and it made me really intrigued with the actual story of Grace Marks because I want to research her more, see what actually happened in this case, and see how factual this miniseries was. But it was so intriguing and I highly recommend it if you're into mystery series because this one is really, really good. And the other show I really enjoyed was the first season of Slasher. I've only seen the first season. Slasher is on Netflix if you're in the United States, and the first season is subtitled Executioner. It is about a woman played by Katie McGrath, my newest girl crush, and she returns home to the town where her parents were murdered, and once she returns home, someone who is copycatting the serial killer that killed her parents starts killing people in the town. So of course this story is focused around who is the killer in this town, why are they targeting these people? It's just a fun ride. Is it a perfect show? No. But it's a fun slasher show. It's a fun mystery. The characters are eclectic and just fun to watch. It's fun to see the, you know, deaths because I'm a creepy person. But it's a fun show and if you're into slasher shows, definitely check out uh, Slasher. In the last section of this favorites, are the video games that I loved. First up is Hidden Agenda. This is the latest game from Supermassive Games who previously created Until Dawn. And Hidden Agenda is really unique because first off you have to play it with your smartphone, you have to have a Wi-Fi connection, you cannot play this game any other way, but it feels really organic to play it this way. And I love the fact that it stars Katie Cassidy as the main character because I love Katie Cassidy and she did such a good job portraying Becky Marnie, the police detective that you play as. I love the whole central concept of trying to find out who the trapper killer is 
And of course, like Until Dawn, you can choose your dialogue choices, you can choose your actions, and of course these factor into the ripple effect, which means every choice you make affects the story. Your characters can die, and I think that makes it a really interesting experience. I actually got the best ending possible on my first playthrough, but it's a really fun game, and you can actually play this with up to five other people, but you have to be in the same location. And I really do want to play it with other people, I just don't have any friends here. <laughs> but it's a really good fun game especially for $20 it is a budget title if you have a smartphone if you love playing mystery games and if you liked Until Dawn I highly recommend Hidden Agenda for you to play also I forgot to mention it's a PS4 exclusive BT dubs and the last favorite and the last game that I've been so addicted to is the Frozen Wilds which is the DLC expansion for Horizon Zero Dawn. This continues the story and you get to see and explore and get to know the Banuk settlement in the game and the Banuk people are just so interesting and the quests are fun. They're different from the main game. There's a different storyline for this section and it just adds to the experience. There's new skills you can learn, there's new weapons and armor you can get, and of course you can carry this over to your new game plus after you finish. But it's just a lot of fun, it's really well done, it's beautiful, the voice acting's phenomenal, and I can't highly recommend this enough. But you do have to have the base game before you can play the Frozen Wilds, and you have to be at least level 30 because this is a challenging expansion, but it's really fun and it just adds to the experience. So those are my favorites for part one of my November 2017 favorites. If you like this video, leave a like. Let me know what you've loved so far in the month of November in the comment box down below. If you like the video, make sure to share it because it helps my channel grow. Also, if you're new to the channel and you haven't subscribed yet, but you like what you've seen and heard, hit the subscribe button and also hit the notification bell, even if you are subscribed, so you'll be alerted whenever I upload a new video or start a new live stream. And if you'd like to follow me on social media sites, all those are listed in the description box down below. I love you guys. Thank you so much. You're always my favorite every single month. Peace and kisses. Bye. Sing me a song of the last that is gone. Oh, hey, you're still here. What a crazy random happenstance. Well, since you just caught me singing and ringing off guard, you might as well click on my floating face that will appear over here soonish and subscribe to my channel. Also, if you'd like to see my previous video, it will be up here somewhere. And if you'd like to see a playlist of videos that you can watch on repeat all day, every day, for the rest of your life, you'll find that over here as well. I'm going to go back to reading my favorite book of all time. Okay, you can, you can go now because I'm really deep into a Jamie Fraser plotline.